Hi everybody, Martin the Flickin' Feathers again today. I'm tying a wee pair they're going for you. This is a Butano, Butano. Deadly fly, um, not just for trout and grayling. We catch a lot of species on this in the rivers. Well worth having in your box. I'm doing a restock because I'm running out. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page. For anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the monthly fly tying classes, enter into the giveaways, and get access to the members only content. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new video, videos and you can come and watch them. Like the video, share the video, comment below, watch all the way to the end, that all helps the channel. So I've got my hook in my vice, this is a full and mill FM5045, it's a jig force and it's a size 16. I've got a 3.5mm silver tungsten bead, size the bead to suit yourself, obviously you can tie these in different sizes as well, 20s up to about a 14 probably is the most likely. I've run on some uni, uh, sorry, UTC and fluorescent orange. Not fire orange, just the fluorescent orange. I like the flat thread for the Perdigon bodies. Um, adding hotspot collars is not that important, but the body, the flat thread does help. So I've, I've come down nearly to the end of the shank there. I've got a couple of thread turns worth of space. And I'm going to tie my tail in, which I'm going to use a wee bunch of Cock de Leon. And it's... I don't know, six fibres here, and I'm going to make it about a, a bit of shank length. So I'll catch that in, and I'm angling it towards myself. I'll let the thread turns, take it on, the butts onto the top, a wee bit short. Better. And I'll take a couple of turns back onto the bare hook, and that gives me my tail. Now, you'll see my bead's still a bit loose, but that's fine. Uh, that'll actually help me later, because I can let the the knot and the waist slide in there. So, cut the base pieces of that, the length of the... the length of the body. Right up to the back of the bead. And I'll take my tinsel and I'll catch this in again. Waist piece the length of the body. Now I'm using, you could use plain pearl, would be fine because the fluorescent thread would show through and give it its colour. But I'm using the fluorescent orange hen stuff, Perdigon body. It's PB F06. So I'll take my thread up and touch and turn, just tidying everything up. And you'll see that will just go right in. Oops. Just make sure that bead will sit the way I want it to. It'll come up. Now I'm going to put a wee bit of taper in with my thread. So, back down. I've got to stop just a thread turn ahead of the tail tie in just so that when I turn my tinsel it's less likely to try to slip back. I'll take an open turn up to about the two thirds mark. Come up with the thread. And then back. Halfway. Come up to about the one third. Up to the front. And then I'm going to quick finish this. And I'm going to pull the knot tight upwards so that the knot slips into the space in the bead and that's why I've left it slightly loose there and now I can stick my scissors into the slot trim that away and it's completely lost right it's, I think it's better to change your thread colours before you do the tinsel body it just gives you a, a tidier fly I think at the end so I'm going to start my collar colour and this is a round thread, this is just uni. And again, I'm just kind of 
catching that off and shuffling it into the back of the bead there. You see I'm pulling up and forward and it's shunting the turns in and that's sort of stabilised the bead. Trim the waist piece in the back and then I'll come back my collar length and I don't want it very big. Um, like from the back of the bead I only want maybe four or five turns of thread. And I'm coming up and I'm letting my thread hang right against the back of the bead again. And then I'll take my tinsel and I'll come up the body. Now, touching turns, you don't need to overlap because you've already got the taper from your thread. If you leave a wee space, it's not the end of the world, but do try and get them touching. And I'm just going to come right up over the black thread because this means when I finish off my collar it's as if the whole fly's running in together and there's no any gaps catch that off on top there's three turns there's plenty to hold that and you'll see the waist piece again it's in the back of the bead in the slot so I can trim that away and it's in there right we've got everything's any wee stubs are hidden so I'll come back just put my collar on And then, whip finish, you can use the tool if you want, or your hands, it doesn't matter. But put plenty of turns on, that must have been six or seven, right? Put it tight, let the thread relax, and tighten it again, right? See the flex in the hook? And then I'm going to come up, I've got to turn it so I can see where my thread cut's going to be. I'm going to come up, press my scissors hard against the body, and snip, and that tag end of thread just slides up into the back of the knot and it's completely smooth, it's hidden because it was under tension and the long knot you have enough that you can it can slide under a turn and you don't need to worry about the knot blowing up you know if you only do two or three it might ping back too far so finishing the fly off a nice light coat of uh, resin, this is bone dry solar res first coat on there, very very little, just enough to seal it really. I'm just turning it, that should be enough to, just, I mean it'll be set but it's just really to stop it moving and then I'll come in with a second coat just to smooth everything out. The first coat seals the stuff and then that second coat, again, no heavy, I don't want a big heavy coat on it. But the second coat will just really smooth out the body. A smoother body sinks faster, which again, that's why you're trying to avoid any wee tags of thread or anything sticking out. Again, just turning the hook, just making sure it's a nice, even coat. Any taper is going towards the bead rate. I don't have a reverse taper with my resin or nothing. And then, hit it with the light. And there you go. That's my butano. Got a wee bit of resin on the tail there, so I'm just. Once it's set, you can just snap it and take it away. And this fly's done. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below, and I'll see you for another video. Take lens, guys. Bye.